hard to describe dreams really you know, or nightmares. I never watched the first Terminator film because after seeing I saw the second one and then somebody told me that the first one is just Arnold chasing Don Connor around or something. Prolonged nightmare kind of thing, like an immortal kind of fucking I go about maybe if it was scarier. An invincible machine chasing you relentlessly and relentlessly and all you could do was be on the run. That affected me when I was a kid, I thought it was a terrible thing. Now I'd hate to live the Bob Dylan Eric um uh have no memory. <laughs> uh cheated foxy person <laughs> I can't remember it at all. Sometimes of freedom. Um oh, I've no memory. You know, this is one of the aspects of this. Nightmare there's no memory. It's like being in a hell place and you can't move or you have no memory or you can't do something. But I never watched it because I never, I never watched it because I thought it was a terrible, horrible thing. Maybe cheated infidel, chained and cheated by pursuit or something. I can't remember what it was. Trying to give it some justice there, but um, yeah, it was just terrifying to me that notion of um, being relentlessly hunted. And this has been happening to me now in real life for like nine years, and it's it's even worse than I could have even possibly imagined. It's not just like you know one. Um, I'm trying to express a nightmare to you. It's going to be your future as well. I was forced into isolation for a very long time and forced to treat everybody with an uncertain eugenic disease. And if you notice, these all did that at COVID time. These are all forced into isolation and to treat each other with uncertain eugenic diseases. Um, I suppose it's letting you know the nightmare that's ahead of you. Um, I'm not sure how it manifests. Like, I have no mem. Mem is Hebrew, it's like waters. Memory, and you have no rivers. Rivers containing. Um, yeah, it's hard to express it. It's hard to get into the mindset of what it's like to be hunted by the world. The biggest, scariest, most powerful, powerful people in the world. Because I hit number one, I hit the top, and they just get the best of everything. And they uh, tore my life apart. I was just one to do. They thought they'd just rob my holy fortune, rob everything. Mind, my ovaries, my afterlife, my stars. And then just snuff me off and disappear me. And I don't die, which is the great part of the story. Because they've probably done this quite a lot, and they're probably very used to doing this. Even so, you know, but they probably have this routine where they have been doing this and robbing people and disappearing them for quite some time, I'd imagine, and throughout Christianity. But I don't die, <laughs> so that's funny, isn't it? <laughs> we get one back on them. Don't Houdini me and try to kill me. If you do harm me, terrible things happen, like coronavirus in the world. That was an antecedent of coronavirus thing as an interview. <clears throat> but um yeah the nightmare, how do I explain this? So um I don't even know where to begin. Um started with scary mafia and these were terrible racketeering information it's good gospel, it's a good fear policy to know the truth. I did other video to tell the truth about the water for and Wexford people. So they're horrible, scary, monstrous people as they are, and they're doing most of the legwork, keeping me, chasing me around the country or if I leave, because they're good little servants. They're faithful little servants to the Illuminati. They wouldn't serve the British or much royalty, but they're happy to serve monsters from Florida and be their little pet servants, their little black and tan army group, these little uh, stinky fucking gypsies. Uh, they're not travellers, but they do act and pretend to be travellers, and they give travelling people a terrible reputation. But they're not travellers, trust me. <laughs> These people, they live in caravans, but they're not car They're not traveller people. Um, yeah, so um, they're hunting me like a dog, relentlessly. I went even camping and went to walk out into the country to get away, and they just chased me and hunted me, and they were just like animals. And so that, that, you know, I called 911 and 112 one time when I was having a stroke, I said this in a video, and they wouldn't help me. That's the extent of the nightmare that I'm living in. It's like you're living in the Matrix and you can't get out and everyone is turned into Smith and you just have to walk around very calmly, not to excite them. People just irrationally are attacking all my friends and family. It's really weird. It's a bit magnetic. <laughs> but they're really just hassling and honing in and... <sighs> you know, they can just condition a lot of negativity. So anywhere you go people think you're a murderer or a rapist or something horrible. So I don't even like to say those words. Celibate and vegan. Um, but uh, 
you know, attracts a lot of bad negativity, and then they do this the same to anyone I befriend, really. So, like, they smashed my heart, life, tore me, dissimilated me, and tore all my family apart from me. It was really a bad emotional heartbreak during all those, like, just having everyone you've ever loved being ripped out of your chest. It's really, it was really, it was weird and painful. Things taken away. Constant despair that, like, you're looming after life, or your safety net in life has been taken away from you as well. There's nothing you can do to, to stop them. Um... <sighs> So I got a lot of rig-loaded gypsy practices that are murdering women and children all day and making driving people tormented and insane or burning things and just doing absolute sodomistic gypsy stuff. The things that they do is like mad magazine crap in America. It's just nightmares. There's no end to them. Killing cattle. There's no end to them. You wouldn't believe it if you had seen it. It's like, oh, it's... You got all these giddy American orphan kids. That's why they kind of like the Sinn Féin bar bar households because they had loads of orphans and they also did the kind of same thing in America. And they're all so excited and, you know, really um, desensitised. <laughs> really desensitised. <laughs> um, I'm not afraid, I mean, of it, in any sort of way. <laughs> little bratty fucking gypsy little pups. But, um, no, you know, they'd kill you, they'd crush you like an egg. They wouldn't care. Um... Yeah, so anyone I naturally befriend from being a nice person or them being a nice person to me has a hard time then. And they also get kind of negatively treated and kind of see this. It's very hard for people to be my friend then. I'm very understanding when people don't want to be my friend or hang around with me anymore. Because I pretty much lost everyone because I understand it's very difficult. In this current predicament. So I have to suffer that, you know, or not suffer that, but like, you know. understand it that I have to be going it alone but going it alone doesn't fix it um, it goes into holy perdition and I'll be immortal and I could live like Methuselah, someone to be 900 years old it's just very painful in the meantime I couldn't care really if he's rotten fall apart like the draining basically um, I've said this in another video, spinal fluids create oils and stuff and they harvest it and they over harvest it and they burn it all out and take it and it's like a vacuum in your brain and a vacuum in your spine and your spine spine is crunchy and stuff and it's really painful and they don't stop they're just like locusts they just fed and feed and feed like big ignorant clouds of locusts they've distributed this to millions of people worldwide if you have like augmented reality or you bought VR headsets and shit they're excuse me they're selling it to you to be marked by the beast there's like 120 people now that they've spread my name to. So it's not a very natural, so it's not just going to be like Jerusalem being destroyed. It's like the whole world is engulfed already in the sword of Elisha. And not even Elisha, sword of Elijah, you know what I mean? Elisha is not even passed on yet. Um, I won't die until 120 million people hear my absolute and full testimony from my mouth, directly recognised as me, the person teaching it. This is what Christianity is. That's how Christianity fixed it. You recognise the person and you hear his teachings. Loads them gospel truths, man. So can't get enough. I'll be in church every day for that good old gospel truth, man. A lot of people didn't want the gospel truth until they were all dead and buried, did they? Because everyone was like, oh, Herod's a gypsy and Caiaphas is a gypsy and all these people were gypsies. Pontius Pilate was grand. I don't know. <laughs> Pontius and Judas have a bad reputation. Like, I found no very little fault in either of them. <laughs> Words of Pontius Pilate. I've found no fault with this young man whatsoever, although they're trying their best to find some reason. You know, even because he was posh, they said, if you hang around with tax collectors, you are the tax collectors, what are you saying to me? <laughs> like, they had nothing against them. And they'd probably kill loads of people before Jesus for silly other reasons, just like... They'd probably kill a lot of people just like me before, but even so. So, um... Yes, a little anomaly, isn't it? A little anomaly, it's very funny. I still can't make you appreciate this. I wanted this video was to make you appreciate the mindset of what I'm going through, to make the urgency somewhat on the matter to get going on this or fixing this, but um, it's not really doing justice um, expressing. So I'm mean, like, you know, I know I'm very aware, like there's, gr there's groups of people out there, gangs, the teamwork basically, and they're all bonking my mother, you know, man. Like to know that your mother is being defiled and tortured in most scenes and brutally um, objectified in weird um, trippy dream or whatever they're doing. But I'm very aware of the fact that there's 
dozens of people at the very one time all sodomizing my mother. If you can appreciate that as part of torment, and then your friends and family or everyone you've ever loved, healthy history of girlfriends, and I'm very aware that they're probably all being hunted, stalked and abused. No, I can't get it. No one believe you, first of all, on this. If they do, they're not happy at me. I've noticed that I would probably either blame me for my existence. I didn't corrupt my temple. I had a very nice temple. It was a blessing to everyone I knew. Everyone I knew just used to turn very bright-eyed and glowing skin. I noticed this. No, and I was always really pale and ugly. <laughs> but uh, I noticed people around me turned out very golden. But they corrupted and defiled the temple now, so maybe. I, I don't think you was my... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I still don't really naturally make friends anymore. They cut me off. Even if I say a neighbour on the street when I'm walking by, they uh, see such music. Cut me off from everybody. Keep me cut me off from everybody. That cutting off has an effect, you know. That can make you sick. Um. So uh, nightmare I'm living in. Um. How can I forgive? You know. Um. There's girls out there that are all working with them. They probably got bullied now. And in fairness to them, like Revelation says, no mystery on her head or mystery on her head. Mystery Babylon. Here's the Scarlet Woman of Babylon. Whatever mystery. But men in this inversion that I grew up in and the stability that I grew up in is clearly men are the way well worse. There's no mystery to me. They all got bullied and brainwashed. I knew a girl, Orla, and they did weird magic, horrible. I saw them doing it. I see these kind of things. I meant to be stopping them and cutting off their heads. and really. But they did terrible things to brainwash her and uh, warp her mind and warp her brain. And... Um, She's a lovely young Irish girl, Christian girl, you know, and, and training nurse. If you want to be that kind of work, you know what I mean? You must be a nice fucking person, excuse me, it's not fucking pleasant work. Hanging out in schizo wards. Um, excuse me, sorry, no, I mean schizo wards. No one there was actually crazy except for a few of the doctors. Not, they're not even doctors, sorry. Actually, I saw one person that wasn't mentally stable there, and that person got sent home in a day because they were too much bother. No one else that I didn't saw was there was any. I spent half a year of my life in Skid's Awards now. Because the machine just trying to drag me in, there was nothing wrong with me, but they just wanted to drag me into the fix it shop. So in this eight years, I've been dragged into a psychiatric home. Sorry, John Connor. I'm sorry, Connor. My mother's been tormented and destroyed. I'm very aware of it. I'm homeless, fighting little rebel against the system, public enemy number one. My name is very similar to Mr. Connor's. I'm hoping that an American senator of like California will come and save me, and then I'll make him immortal by loving him like Jesus saved John the Baptist and then Arnie will be like immortal like the movie and I might finally get my little like Suzuki GN125 <laughs> um, oh no, no. Yeah. Arnie has Harry Davis so uh, yeah dragon skit wars skit wars put needles in me force me onto things um Uh, you know, hometown is flooded. There's a very little country back, backwater town kind of place you'd hide the lamb. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> next to a field full of lambs. And I uh, was every. I said this in this one of the songs that I wrote. Every wrath and royal malignant gypsy halts in my hometown, and everyone else coming to town, like everyone flocked from all over the world, and they all said a poem, so they're all living. Creepishly in my neighbourhood, there's um, orphan houses, or orphans, but like these asylum houses full of kids. And I just know it's got something to do with Miami and Florida and bringing kids to the area and kids disappearing. And... Oh, we were working for these people we didn't even know. And I was like, I told you this was happening years ago and no one's listening to me now. It comes through in the courts and it comes through with religious absurdity. They're murdering children all over the country. Because, I don't know. So I had to torment my awareness is, I suppose, like ignorance is a place like knowledge is a torment or yeah, understanding is a nightmare. I forget there was ignorance is a place. Painful awareness, I was a painfully aware. Painfully aware of the situation. Um Yeah, so cops are like robocops and stuff and they're all weird. They like tried to kill me, disembowel me, shot in the face by a pig, didn't die, dragged me to a place, tried to disembowel me, didn't die. I heard I went to try to get some peace for my head. I went camping up on a mountain there a while back, not too long ago. And when I woke up in the morning, I had the 
a killer migraine in the world and when I got down to the five lows local soup kitchen I had a purple head like my head was purple and I was like I look dead and it turns out I think I heard some lad did actually do me in that night <laughs> and I was there walking around the next day and this has happened a bit in Bray, lads, I'd see a young lads freaking out, I was like, oh my god, what the fuck, <laughs> isn't he dead? I thought he was dead. Which makes me, begs the question, how much do people in this country get away with murdering people? If they could, like, try to get away with murdering me. And, like, does this happen often? Sinn Féin, Gardaí, military? They were all there, Gardaí, armed Gardaí. Probably military dressed as guardy. And how often do you just disappear and kill people? Again, they tried to kill me exactly as predicted with the name of a murder criminal. The name of a crucify me with the name of a criminal to make it possible. He's still walking around. He's got a, he's got a job with these people. You know what I mean? And I recently lost a very uh, good friend of mine, and I think it was through the same reason. Um, I had a nightmare that my friends are being murdered or being framed and um, persecuted and again can't get any help anywhere on this matter just surrounded by it I don't know if it's a bad joke on my behalf or my um, something I'm overlooking uh, it's, I, I suffer up until high noon so this is just a way to distract me really uh, this is a pretty crappy video in fairness just trying to summarize or make you imagine the nightmare this is very unimaginable this predicament nightmare you have to watch Terminator 1, see how they fix that. But yeah, I need to kind of put on it, but whoever does show up, I don't know why there's not a queue at the front door um, to be immortal. Um, to say it's Baptist. Immortal Stephen Fry, you want Stephen Fry want to come and save me and then make Stephen Fry immortal? I will probably love whoever comes and saves me so much that I will just. There will be anyone involved in the early process of turning, returning order to the temple. Because they probably might be scary and persecutable, and they might screw at you or threaten you. It will consume the earth, the entire earth. <laughs> so you know, be not afraid. <laughs> be afraid of that occurring. Broken, burning bush, broken temple, or burning bush consuming the earth. Because I don't know if that's ever happened before. It would look like the Matrix. <laughs> um. Come with me, you must live. Um, come with me, you don't die. <laughs> um, right, yeah. Um, torment or anything else? Add to torment, nightmare, existence. Thanks, girl, for everyone who loved or cared for has been hunted. There's girls out there working with them that are actually using my mother's name or my deceased grandmother's names and orreries. So they they're selling that basically. They sell themselves in spiritual, sexual, slave slavery. Oh, right. oh, there we go. Battery's going there. And they're selling. There is in the cloth of my granny, basically. You know, they're selling my granny's heaven. They're just giving it, giving it away. And everybody's just giving it away. Um, don't really care much for money. I know there's a massive holy fortune acquired. I'm not there's a fortune. I'm worth a fortune. I think it's more than worth a fortune if you have fourteen hundred stars and they're all about twelve um, or a couple billion a piece. You know, fourteen hundred times. Um, a few couple of billion, it's a lot, my billions. <clears throat> yeah, that's like when the TV show came out when this all started. 